Okay, and let's start. Um, yeah, so um, uh, just as a quick introduction uh, about uh, our group. So we are a group of uh, engineering, psychology, design, and uh, media informatics people uh, who are working on uh, sustainable and digital resource regulation, mainly uh, with focus on three lines of uh, research, uh, lots of applied projects, uh, and some of these projects explicitly focus uh, the topic of uh, sustainable mobility. And today I want to talk about uh, a study from uh, a project that we are doing together with Fonda Research Institute of Europe uh, in Offenbach. Um, and the project is co uh, right uh, down the corner. Um, and uh, I want to start my presentation with a question, which is, uh, what would you say is the key challenge of the transition to 100% green energy? Uh, maybe you would uh, already come up with this answer. Uh, it's energy storage, right? So we can scale up uh, renewable energy production nearly unlimited, but uh, uh, we need uh, energy storage to really make use of uh, this potential. Um, for example, in Germany, we now have uh, about or a bit more than 1 million uh, electric vehicles, fully electric vehicles on the road. Uh, and if we look at the average uh, battery size, we, uh, this sums up to a battery, um, virtual battery uh, that is on the road of about 50 gig uh, gigawatt hours, and that's really huge, right? Uh, so um, there is a huge potential for uh, a storage system that is already on the market, uh, but there is a human factors challenge to be solved, which is how do we combine the needs of users and the needs, let's say, uh, of the grid? And that's basically the story behind co-charge. Uh, so um, the idea is that electric vehicles uh, can support the efficient utilization of energy resources, renewable energy resources, uh, yet uh, we have to align um, the mobility needs of users uh, or experienced mobility needs and uh, the grid side needs uh, or the needs of all these agents uh, in the energy grid. Uh, and we could use something like a smart charging agent based on AI to integrate these needs. So the challenge is in the end, uh, how can we design uh, an agent that feels like uh, it's a corporation, so that uh, invites people uh, to cooperate um, and feel, uh, have a better um, positive user experience. Um, and for this uh, to happen, we first have to have a good psychological understanding of what is cooperativity what is perceived experience cooperativity, uh, especially in this context. To maybe come up in the end with something like here on the uh, down right side, uh, that you have an app that tells you when you uh, are at home, uh, okay, based on the last three months, you need a maximum of 100 km range tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Is it okay if I set the charging window to X, Y, Z? Um, yeah. And uh, in this study, we specifically look at one prerequisite of uh, this whole cooperation thing, which is um, if you want to right, if you want to cooperate with another human or let's say another AI agent, uh, there's a certain need that this agent uh, is um, traceable, so that you can somehow relate, interpret, uh, and interact. Um, so uh, trust. In the end, it's a core variable for any human human, but also human agent. I mean, we know it from automation research, uh, collaboration. Uh, and in the field of smart charging, you could say that there is a certain uncertainty uh, of, um, um, or yeah, there is an uncertainty because of uh, the misbalance of the relevant knowledge, right? So the algorithm, the smart charging uh, agent knows uh, values and um, yeah, features and the current stages uh, of lots of agents in the grid, so it has uh, access to lots of data, the human typically not. Um, and so in, end, in the end, users have to rely uh, on the agent's functionality and also that the agent on one hand side combines data accurately and precisely, and on the other hand side also has a good understanding of their needs and wishes and preferences. Uh, so here again, we are uh, in the field of uh, explainable AI, um, and yeah, as we have heard in the talks before, uh, AI explainability can enhance trust in uh, AI systems. Uh, and uh, if we somehow realize that uh, users can have a deepened knowledge, uh, understanding of agents' general functionality, 
uh, through transparent, comprehensive uh, explanations of the decisions of the algorithm, then we could have something that is a prerequisite for cooperativeness. Uh, and yeah, this concept is also labeled typically as AI traceability, uh, which needs a certain uh, awareness or which needs to enable the human in the end to have a certain awareness of the system's current status. So all of you who are familiar with the concept of, uh, of situation awareness, you could say at least there should be a subjective, good subjective uh, situation awareness um, as enabling users to feel uh, or have a good user experience. And the key variable here is uh, that we have established in our uh, XII research over the last years is uh, uh, SIPA, uh, Subjective Information Processing Awareness, that also has a SIPA scale attached. So it's the experience of being enabled by a system to perceive, understand, and predict its information processing, and it's linked to trust and automated systems. So this is a short uh, advertising um, segment of the talk, uh, because if you're doing some research in XAI, XAI uh, you may be interested uh, in the scale, which is already tested in quite a lot of uh, studies and projects uh, so far, um, and perhaps also to, to um, make a point for uh, the subjective thing, I mean, in the end, if you really want to predict user behavior, user behave, users will always behave on the subjective understanding of uh, the system, right? Because this settles somehow how they relate uh, to a system. Um, so um, we think it's quite useful, but yeah, um, we wouldn't have done it if not. Um, okay, so for this uh, study, we had four hypotheses, five hypotheses. First, uh, if you give people more information uh, on such a smart, smart charging agent, uh, SIPA should increase, uh, trust should also increase, H2. Uh, third, um, SIPA and trust should be positively correlated, so again, validation oriented. H4, uh, also, ideally, the prediction performance should increase if there is more, more relevant expected information disclosed by the agent. And in the end, uh, the predictability, CEPA predictability, experience predictability, and prediction performance should be correlated. So let's have a look. Uh, we did a, um, a study with uh, 57 participants. Um, it's a bit limited, so I mean, it's a first step because people didn't have uh, a lot of uh, BV experience before. That's fine because our setting was car sharing and you can um, estimate that many people who use a car sharing service for the first time may only also not have a lot of EV experience right now, today. So it's not like completely invalid, but uh, you should keep it in mind uh, for, for the following. Uh, and what people did there, and I think I explained it better here, they had several obs observation blocks. They saw for several blocks um, certain cost calculations. So if you would book the vehicle now, this would be the cost. Um, and how this cost uh, is calculated. And then in the end, uh, they had uh, T6, uh, the performance block. And after each block, they, uh, we assessed uh, situation information processing awareness, uh, so, uh, subjective information processing awareness, and facets of system trust. And it's a short trust scale we developed uh, like mm -hmm. 10 years ago or so. Um, yeah, I think that's any, uh, everything we need to know here. What's perhaps interesting, looks complex in the beginning, it's not too complex if you go through it. Uh, I only make it very, very short. So, of course, if you, uh, if you rent a car sharing vehicle, then how is the price calculated? Typically, it says, okay, um, how long do you leave the vehicle and how long you block the vehicle, the more you have to pay. Maybe there's also a distance uh, fee, uh, but of course there could be much more. For example, people should, uh, to have an ideal um, distribution, ideal utilization of this resource of one vehicle, you should uh, normally have different prices if it's rush hour or not. So if there's high demand or not. Um, and if you look further in the, in the direction of uh, what would be a very sustainable booking, then uh, of course, uh, it's not just uh, the distance you drive, but uh, um, kilowatt hours you use. Right, so if you use less keyword hours, it should be cheaper, um, cheaper. Um, and then in the end, of course, uh, it also depends if you need to make trade charge afterwards or if you need to charge a car in a time where the grid is also very much in need, it is also not yet, uh, as sustainable. So the best uh, booking would be in uh, not rush hour, uh, low demand time um, with um, 
reasonable um, SOC, ISOC use, uh, use, so kilowatt hours use, uh, use um, and uh, very good fitting to uh, the grid uh, demand needs, which can be represented here down here with the grid demand price. So, and this is what we represented in algorithm. So, not too complex, is it? Um, and people saw something like this in the minimum information conditions. So, we didn't say euros, we said tokens. Um, to be honest, uh, we'll change that in our next, uh, next, next study because it's a bit technical. Uh, we wanted to get rid of this euro representation and willingness to pay uh, things. But yeah, always, if you do the statistics, there are branches of invisible branches. Um, right, so that's basically the information we would also have today. Now, um, when the people have this instruction, okay, the algorithm optimizes for sustainable booking. This one was uh, um, middle, medium uh, information. This is the maximum information. And now imagine if you would book a car several times. So that is what we simulate here. And would uh, have this explanation how this price is computed, not just uh, saying, okay, that's sustainable, but how is this sustainable? Then would you, uh, over time, establish a mental model or not? Um, what we saw that uh, over these uh, uh, time course of the experiment, over the blocks, um, there was uh, there was a slight increase um, when it comes to uh, the high information. So, um, uh, but what we tested here is our hypothesis, with which was, uh, is high information better than uh, medium and um, low information uh, based on the CIFA score with the contrast analysis. And you can see that that is uh, only the case uh, after a longer time. So first, second, third, uh, serious, serious, not single, but serious of bookings uh, may not yield already the understanding in users that we want to achieve. Um, if we look more into detail, maybe you saw that on the slide that the CIFA has also three correlated uh, subscores. You can see that for chat, that the transparency is experienced quite uh, similar, but understandability and predictability uh, have some uh, changes. Still, you also see, I mean, the sample is not too big, so it may be the scale is not perfectly powered, it's a between subjects design, I'm just to say that. Uh, so we can say uh, first hypothesis is partially supported. The second hypothesis does uh, trust increase. Yeah, somehow not very consistent, but at least also after these many experiences. Uh, and then there's these validation uh, questions. So is there a correlation of CIFA and trust? Yes. It's perfect because it's not redolent, it's not 0.9 or something, uh, but it's uh, yeah, already quite high. Uh, and when it comes to H4, and that's important, uh, that was not supported, uh, so you can see here that there is something like uh, reading tea leaves, visual trends, but it doesn't uh, come anything close to uh, being significant or having a meaningful effect size. Uh, so you can say here that uh, high information didn't makes them more able to predict. So maybe we have something like such an automation pitfall where people experience to feel, or so it's experience to be better informed, but in the end, this being better informed doesn't allow them or isn't sufficient, or it's just an illusion uh, of them being able to uh, more accurately uh, predict or understand the price dynamics. Um, yeah, so, and you can also see that here, so it's a correlation, and the first correlation may also be, uh, which is significant, may not, may be uh, false positive, because it was, if you look at the scan plot, there are a few values calling this. So I would maybe, uh, maybe say, yeah, there's not much of a correlation, which rather speaks for this automation pitfall interpretation. And yeah, I also already said um, everything that is on this slide, uh, on the conclusions. Um, along with presenting the results. So I just uh, make uh, a point for, of course, that's not the, uh, the end. So we have two more years to go and we want to go from online studies to the field. And we have in, at the University in Lübeck uh, a field lab uh, built up over the last three years where we have bi-directional charging vehicles and Canet smart charging system and an active uh, car sharing system with more than 4,000 uh, potential users who are registered. Um, and it's quite a cool uh, field lab to work with. These are the references. Uh, and if you are interested uh, to see it once again, uh, there will be a version of this talk on our YouTube channel, Engineering Psychology, 
uh, as well as uh, quite a lot of other terms from our project in sustainable mobility. And that's it. And ah, I missed to say something very important. Uh, today I'm presenting on behalf of Christiane Artis, who cannot be here. So any questions you can direct to me, but you can also uh, direct to uh, Christiane, who's running the project. Um, so thank you very much for your attention and looking forward to your questions.